We're all familiar with the Japanese superstar Naoya in a way, but how many of you are familiar with his little brother, Takuma? Hello, kamusta? My name is Gino, and today we're going to learn all about the little monster, Takuma in a way. Takuma Inoue started boxing after seeing his big brother compete when he was in elementary school. He boasts a fairly strong amateur pedigree, ending his amateur career going 52 and 5, winning local titles and participating in the AIBA Junior World Championship back in 2011. He turned professional at 17, making his pro debut against future WBO middleweight champion Tatsuya Fukuhara, who was already 18 fights into his pro career. Takuma won that fight by unanimous decision and went on a 12 fight win streak. In this streak, he ended up defeating notable contenders in Forlan Saludar, Kentaro Masuda, and notably winning the interim WBC Bantamweight Championship against the Sana Salapat in 2018. Obviously, there is a glaring blemish on Takuma's record, which came against two-time Olympian Nordine Ubali of France in 2019 during their unification match of the WBC Bantamweight Strap. Now, despite the scorecards being 112-115, 110-117, and a very questionable 107-120, the fight was much more competitive than what the scorecards suggest. I'd personally say that it was much closer to the 112-115 card, if anything. Even after suffering a knockdown in the early rounds, Inoue kept his composure and remained competitive throughout the whole fight, showcasing his resilience and heart. It is worth noting that Ubali was later dethroned by none other than Nunito Donaire, who later faced Big Brother Naoya in the next year. As of now, he is currently on a five-fight win streak, winning the WBA bantamweight belt against former champion Liborio Solis in a convincing decision win. He is set to defend his belt against former IBF Superfly champion Jerwin Ancajas on February 24th. That begs the question, how good is Takuma anyway? The short answer is, he's almost world class. I say almost because he has a massive glaring weakness, his power. To put it lightly, he has what the community calls pillow hands. He holds the second lowest KO percentage among active champions at 22%, just 2% higher than Mexico's IBF Lightfly champion, Adrian Curiel. Genetics aside, the biggest reason as to why Takuma lacks power is that he doesn't sit on his punches. He doesn't load a lot of his shots, but it allows him to throw fast combinations and counters in return. While he can't knock anybody out, he's done some serious accumulated damage to some of his opponents. If he has any sort of improvement in his power in any way, it would easily make him the biggest threat to the Bantamweight division. He's otherwise improved massively on other aspects of his game, especially after his loss to Ubali. Contrary to what most people would assume, Takuma's style is nothing like Naoya's. While there are some similarities, like their twitchy movement and fast hand speed, that's where the similarities end. Aside from the obvious difference in power, the biggest difference between the two is that Naoya is much more comfortable pushing his opponents to the ropes, while Takuma, on the other hand, is comfortable being on the ropes. Most of Takuma's highlights are of him on the ropes, weaving and countering. He's got excellent head movement, excellent punch selection, and top-tier footwork. But what this in a way strong suit is, is counterpunching. I can't stress this enough. Takuma is an elite counterpuncher. If you watch any of his highlights, you'll see how clean and how fast he can land a counter. He's able to land counters on the back foot and on the ropes, and he does a very good job at doing that. While not being the same caliber of fighter as Naoya, Takuma is an excellent champion in his own right, and is honestly just as entertaining to watch as his big brother. At 28, he shows a lot of potential for improvement coming into his prime years. His upcoming fight against Jerwin Ancajas is Takuma's biggest test. Despite coming up in weight, Ancajas is still a dangerous opponent, boasting a KO percentage three times as high as Takuma's. Ancajas doesn't have that sort of one-punch knockout power, but it's enough to put Takuma on his ass if he's not careful. In order for Takuma to win, he needs to keep Ancajas at bay and allow him to punch himself out. Takuma has fought many, many 12-rounders and can easily go to distance without losing steam, so that's where his advantage lies. The only way I see Ankahas winning is if he puts Takuma away early. Unless he's fixed his stamina issues, I really don't see him winning a decision. But then again, we never know, so be sure to leave your predictions down below in the comments and I'll be sure to read them. That's gonna be all from me. The fight is on February 24th. Be sure to watch it. Thank you so much for watching, and this has been